Hello friends, I'm Dr. Shayunti Talwar and I welcome you to this session in which I will be discussing uh, If. The name of the poem is If and this is by the very well-known poet Rudyard Kipling. So before we go to the actual poem, which is very interesting and uh, this is a poem with a universal appeal. Let's uh, understand a little or get into a little bit of details about the poet. Rudyard Kipling uh, was born in 1865 and he uh, died in the year 1936. The interesting part about Rudyard Kipling, the interesting uh, life detail about Kipling was that he was born in India. He was born in Mumbai, then Bombay. So he always had a connect with India and his writings also reflected this deep connection which he had with India. Uh, he was of British origin and he was by profession a journalist, a writer of short stories, a poet and a novelist. And uh, he is still remembered and in fact he's immortalized through his very well-known children's uh, work, um, The Jungle Book which has been uh, made into a film. Uh, even in recent years, it has been uh, remade into an air. Uh, there's, there's a very recent version of The Jungle Book also, right? Uh, Rudyard Kipling was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature and he was the first English language writer to receive this prize. He was also recommended uh, several times for the British Poet Laureateship and for uh, the knighthood, but he declined both. He turned down both these uh, recommendations. So that was a little bit of a, about Rudyard Kipling. Now let's understand the concept of the poem If. So uh, this poem is in the form of, uh, it's in the form of a dialogue, but it's a one-sided dialogue where uh, the speaker is a father and the listener who doesn't uh, speak but who is apparently, let's presume he's listening to his father, he's the son. So it's a father-son interaction where the father is giving some advice to his son. But even if we were to look at the content of the poem beyond this father-son uh, dialogue or monologue uh, and the father-son context, uh, the kind of advice that is given uh, has a timeless and a universal appeal. It can be uh, applied across cultures, across communities, across geographical barriers or cultural uh, boundaries uh, because uh, these lessons which the father is giving to the son, these are of a universal nature, right? Because uh, they are looking at uh, problems, goals, uh, roadblocks, uh, the path to success, all of that in a very broad kind of uh, sense. So uh, this poem can be described as a moral lesson in wisdom and it has uh, been uh, treated as a motivational and an inspirational uh, poem because it has life lessons and it has been uh, widely anthologized, it has been prescribed in university syllabi and it, it still is one of the most popular and the most read of Kipling's poems and uh, certainly the most popular of English poems. So let's do a reading of the poem and then we can go along uh, trying to understand it as we read it. So it starts with if. So there's a condition, right? So the, the, the entire structure of the poem, uh, the lexical arrangement, that's the way the, the way the words are arranged in each line. Uh, each line starts or each couplet starts with an if. So it's like the father saying, if you do this, then you'll surely get this, if you do this. So, you know, so this is how the poem starts. This is the father telling the son. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself 
when all men doubt you. But make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies. Or being hated, don't give way to hating. And yet don't look too good, nor talk too wise. So this is the first part of the poem. So what is the father trying to tell the son? If you can keep your head, which means keep your balance. If you can be balanced in a crisis, in a critical situation, we, are, we, we all face problems. You know, life is not just one cake walk. There are ups and downs. So the father is telling the son that if you are in a problem, if you're facing a problem, and in that critical situation, if you can keep your head, that is, if you can maintain your balance, if you can show some mental equilibrium, when everyone around you is going crazy, you know, so when all about you, all about you is everyone around you are losing their heads. So people seem to have lost their heads. So we are familiar with this term, right? Have you lost it or have you lost your mind? Are you out of your mind? So there could be situations when others, uh, when we simply can't think straight, we don't know which road to take, which uh, decision to make. Uh, we don't know how to solve a problem, a crisis. And the father says, if in this situation, when everyone around you is just failing, if you can keep your mental balance, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you. So there could be occasions in your life when everyone looks skeptically at you. They blame you. They uh, hold you uh, responsible for something which you may not have done knowingly. They think you've taken a wrong decision. If that situation ever arises where no one trusts you, everybody doubts you, but you trust yourself. You know what you've done is right. You just have that patience and faith in yourself. And you know this too shall pass. And people will eventually realize that yes, this decision was right. So if at such times when the world goes against you, but you hold your ground. But at the same time, you make allowance for their doubting too. Not that... You are just showing trust in yourself that that is important that you believe in yourself. But at the same time, you don't dismiss other people. You don't dismiss them. You don't dismiss their um, skepticism or their anxiety. You allow them to have their doubts. You just smile and allow them to have their doubts. So you allow a space for their questions also, for their uh, concerns also. Right? Now. This is a very big thing he's saying that you need to be very democratic in your approach. You can't be dictatorial that if I have done this, I can't be wrong. No, I have taken this decision. I think this is right. But nonetheless, if you think this is not the right decision that I've made, let's hear it. So give an allowance to their doubt. Right? Don't dismiss them. Don't silence people. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, so you need to have patience through difficult times, which will see you through difficult times. Don't jump to conclusions. Don't jump up to defend yourself if you can do that. If you can wait, so if you can re really, really cultivate, harbor, train yourself to be patient, right? And not get tired of being patient because sometimes, you know, we just lose all hope in life and we say, why me? Or kitna, you know, we say that, how much more? Hmm? Where are you God? So if you can resist saying that, if you can refrain from saying that, because that means that you're losing hope. Or being lied about, don't deal in lies. So it may happen that people lie to you. But despite people lying to you, if you can refrain from lying to people, so just because someone has lied to you, you don't have to go for a tit for tat response, you know. You don't have to lie back. So regardless of what people around you do, 
you should be honest you should have integrity of character you should have strength you should have an inner consistency right or being hated don't give way to hating so though people hate you you don't hate them back yeah so it is possible that the whole world has gone against you but if you can evolve to that level where you see oh okay today probably they don't understand what i'm doing they are judging me uh, they are harboring this ill uh, feel these ill feelings towards me but tomorrow when they see the results or tomorrow time itself will prove what i have done so i don't have to hate anyone back right i don't have to retaliate if you can do that and yet don't look too good not to talk too wise so but even after doing all this because obviously the kind of bar he is setting is way too high right this is almost like he is expecting the son to be the buddha or gandhi uh, right because it's it's human nature to respond to react to be angry you require a certain kind of uh, certain level of spiritual equilibrium and emotional maturity to not react to not retaliate which is not easy and after telling his son and setting a bar setting a benchmark he says and yet don't look too good not talk too wise so this is a phenomenal benchmark and if you are able to achieve it and yet you're not proud about it so don't try to look too good that oh you know i did this so i am this great uh, evolved person because that is also a problem so be modest about it don't show off don't be too don't try to show that you're too wise don't try to show that you're uh, don't try to flaunt your goodness so these are some of the things he is telling his son now we'll look at the second stanza 